Let's, let's get started. And if I may suggest, um, so some of us are here with um, acronyms and the name of our devices. It would be best if we can rename ourselves so that we know who is speaking. It's always a good practice for us to be able to identify ourselves. So if I could just suggest that we rename ourselves, it would be great. So, um, so we are getting started now. Good morning from California. Good evening in Nigeria. And good evening everywhere else. Um, I guess most of us are from Europe and around the world. My name is Jumoke Akin Taylor, and I'm going to be moderating the session today. So I'm more of a, a referee, an umpire, and I would help make sure that we keep to time and stay on the uh, on the subject that we are going to be speaking on, um, because this is a very important uh, topic, or is it a very important discussion? I would ask that we please keep it professional and keep to the facts, and just let's make sure that the the points that we want to get across are, are put across for everyone to be able to understand it. So that's my role here. And um, thank you for the opportunity. I know this is important to us as the diaspora, and even not just to us as the diasporans, but to Nigeria and global inspect, uh, investors. So I'm going to just mention the name of the panelists here. Um, not I know David hasn't joined us, so maybe I'll start with Comrade Doris Perry Sholarin, and uh, she is she is the president of Nigerian Union in South Africa, and Miss Patient Indi Diki. She's the chairman emeritus Nido America USA. She's also president and CEO of Nigerians in Diaspora Chamber of Commerce, and then we have Jackson Ude, an investigative journalist. We have um, Honorable Dr. Kenneth Gandhi. He is the Chairman Board of Board of Trustees, Nido Europe, uh, between 2016 and 2020. And he's also the CEO of African German Industry Center in Germany. Then we have Comrade Mark Godwin Iwejuanu. He's publisher again Story Media in Italy. Please forgive me if I mispronounce um, your name. Just teach me how to do it. And then we have Comrade Timmy Frank. He's a political activist and social commentator. And no other than there is the, the chief host of the event today and that is well known to everyone, Comrade Frederick Odorige, Chairman Emeritus, Lido Hungary and Global Coordinator of GCSDN. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to hand over to um, I'm going to hand over to uh, the PR of GCFN to give us a short speech, and then we would move right into the panel discussion. PR, comrade. Yes. I believe this is coming from Miss. Um, yeah, thank you. Fellow Nigerian compatriots, home and abroad, on behalf of the Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria, GCSDN, I wish to welcome you all to this program, which shall last for two hours. GCSDN is registered in Texas, of America. We have chapters in 40 countries, and our main <coughs> objectives are the promotion of democracy and security in Nigeria with other humanitarian activities. Henceforth, we shall have this, shall have such discussion. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Um, I think someone is. Uh... There may be a hacker. So let's let's just look through the the list. The list. Yes, please. Yeah, they, it's more than likely there is a hacker here or just someone who is. Uh, I think everyone should turn on their camera just for us to know. Yeah, and, and then we should all. Yeah, and, I think everyone should turn on their camera, and, and then rename ourselves and those that we do not identify. We can remove from the room. This is bound to happen. Okay. So we just need to be cautious. So, uh, G Nine Pro, can you identify yourself, please? And iPhone, can you turn on your camera and also rename yourself so we know who you are? Thank you. Uh, G Nine Pro, please go ahead and turn on your camera. We you just want to avoid hackers and interference. PDP, we also ask that you please do the same. Please turn on your camera. So uh, if I may suggest, maybe we can put those that haven't uh, turned on their camera or identified themselves in the waiting room and give them an opportunity to do so. But it's, it's entirely up to you, uh, Mr. Frederick, how you want to handle that. Okay, thank you. Please carry on, Prince. Our fellow Nigerian compatriots, home and abroad, on behalf of the Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria, GCSDN, I wish to welcome you all to this program, which shall last for two hours. GCSDN is registered in Texas, United States of America. We have chapters in 40 countries, and our main objectives are the promotion of democracy and security in Nigeria with other humanitarian activities. Henceforth, we shall be having such discussion on a monthly basis. The aim is to review and profile solution to critical issues facing our country, Nigeria. In today's topic, you may, you may have observed that the word forgery is put in inverted comma because we are not judges. However, the topic is angled on two undeniable facts. One, that though the Chicago State University admitted that Bola Tinubu attended their university, they also sworn on oath that they did not issue the certificate which Tinubu presented to INEC in the 2023 election. We must refuse to separate the, separate the two facts presented by the university. Second, the secondary school certificate presented by Tinubu shows that the school was not in existence as of the time Tinubu claimed to have attended the school. Tinubu presented a 1970 GCS, GCE level A, A level resort in which he claimed to have attended government college, Lagos. The real problem is the government college, Lagos, was only established in 1974. Again, again, this, that sign post forgery. Fellow Nigerians, we must refuse to separate the truth from the truth. Nigeria comes first. On that note, I welcome you once again, and I yield the floor to the moderator, Comrade Jumoke Akin Taylor. Thank you very much for providing um, that background. <laughs> okay, we are going to ask, uh, I'm going to combine the two questions we have into one, and um, we each panelist has two minutes to speak to it. And the first question or the questions are, what are the impacts of Bola Ahmed Tinumbu certificate forgery in court, as my brother just said, on Nigerians in diaspora and foreign investors? And what should Nigerians in diaspora do to address this issue? So I will start off with, um, not in any particular order, maybe, uh, is David here? I wanted to just go with the panel. If David is here, maybe we could start with David and just go through as we have the names on the panel. Timmy, is David here? It's not, it's not here okay. yet. Okay, so we'll go to uh, Comrade Doris Ikeri Sholari. Go ahead, madam. Two minutes, please. 
Thank you very much, Mugito. I just want to um pay. <laughs> Frederick, please make me co-host. I think I can identify some of the people from where the noise is coming from. Can I proceed? Please go ahead. Okay, man. Marine, the current president of the Nigerian Union, South Africa. Go I uh, done existing protocols and I pay honor to whom honor is due. My salute goes to the organizer, the moderator, and every panelist on this uh, program. Thank you for the <laughs> issue. Asking about the consequences of uh, the current president, Bola Metinobo forgery story. It may be coming from, yes. So I, I, I think I, it's important for us to put it out there that this is a conversation, is a discussion, and we do not really appreciate interference because, again, as the PR said, we are not judges. This is a very important discussion for, for us as Nigerians. And so we ask that everyone please comply and not to be, if, if, you're, not, if you're not afraid of the truth, then please, you know, just comply and... and <laughs> Behave yourself here on this platform, um, because th there's no need for this at all. <laughs> Madam, please go ahead. Sorry for the interference. We are just going to have to find a way to manage ourselves through this. Okay. Um. Thank you once again. Go directly to the question. The saga, or would I say, the situation we are facing as Nigerians regarding the issue of the certificate forgery. <laughs> Please remove Alex. Yeah, um, that came from him. Yeah. Sorry, ma'am. Alex. No. Alex, what? I, I I moved him to the waiting room. Okay. Uh, you are co-host already. Yeah. Jumoke. So if there is somebody here whose whose name is not showing, we we'll remove the person immediately. Just move them to the co yeah. Please go ahead, madam. Really sorry. Okay. Um. Just would be very brief. Because I think, I don't know if there's a saboteur here, but uh, in my personal opinion, this situation is very embarrassing and has brought a national disgrace to our country, Nigeria. It is bad enough that carrying the green passport as a Nigerian brings some level of disrepute to you, to your person in a most part of entries. Because you are a Nigerian, the, the status is already you know, derogatory. Now, having a personality like Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the president with so many allegations against his person, which includes the certificate forgery and then the drug lord issue, the and so many things that is tagged to his person is very, very embarrassing to Nigeria as a country. 
Because right now, Nigerians are labeled, apart from being fraudsters, now, even if you order for your transcript from your university where they know you attended school, there's a lot of processes involved. And eventually when it's gotten, there's so much scrutiny delay. At the end of the day, they don't tend to believe the authenticity of your certificate. So now this saga as the number one citizen of the country, it is assumed that Nigerians are fraudulent people. So it's going to further bring a lot of disrepute and going to put us in a situation whereby whatever comes from country Nigeria will seriously be scrutinized and it's going to limit opportunities for particularly those who are in diaspora. If you are working presently in any country of re of I mean, any organization of repute, I'm sure this is going to lead them to start a scrutinization process concerning your employment and also the certificates that you have tendered. Presented. So Thank you. I want to believe that the Supreme Court should make sure that justice is done and to salvage the name and the uh, status of Nigeria as a country so that at least we can gain some respect in Thank the you. public and represent ourselves. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. I'm sure you have other um, to the question. So if I can have um, uh, Madam Patience in the key, uh, two minutes, please. Do you want me to read the questions again? Yeah, no, no, no that's fine. I, I, I have it. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Jim. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, to the organizers of um, this uh, forum. Uh, this is a very... <laughs> yeah, thank you to our uh, comrade uh, uh, Frederick for putting this together. Thanks to your team also. And thank you to fellow um, panelists. Uh, yeah, for me, um, and this is not just about... Uh, For me, this is not. Come just on, Perry, about... please. They should, they should allow. They should, everybody should show his video. People should show their video. All this now, noise that now it, is yes. cutting off. Thank everybody you. Everybody should show his video. Thank you very much. In the next two minutes, if somebody's video is not there, I will remove the person from the group respectfully. And I want to ask. I want you also to just like the our PRO said, we are not judges in uh, in Tinubu's case. And then um, if you believe that this discussion will cause severe and irreparable damage <laughs> to anybody, to use the words of Tinubu, you are deceiving yourself. We are not here to, we are not here to, we are here uh, to, to answer hey, a no, simple question. No, no, In the next one minute, don't talk me. anybody. Thank you. Carry on, please. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Uh, if we don't see yes. him, we will remove him immediately. No more time to waste. Yeah, for me, this is not just about uh, Ahmed Tinubu. Um, it's about the reputation of Nigeria and Nigerians. It's about our great economy. So uh, in a situation where one is found wanting, whether it's a relative or a president or um, a friend, Accountability, transparency is something that is very, very important. Uh, what we have seen in the, uh, uh, in our communities, if I don't like this person, I want to prove. Uh, if I like the other person, I want to uh, keep it secret. So it's not about it's not about whether it's Peter or B or Atiku or Tinubu or even Patience Key. Whatever we see that is going wrong in our community, it's in our own interest that we actually, you know, work on it, you know, stand our ground, make sure things work right for the reputation of our country, for the development, for the growth of our country. So I've been able to put uh, just a few lines of what I think, you know, should be done, uh, you know, what I think the implication, potential implications of a hypothetical situation, you know, where a prominent uh, pop political figure is caught in, uh, in, in this kind of uh, certificate forgery. Uh, like the PRO said, uh, yeah, uh, um, 
uh, a definite uh, judgment has not been given. Uh, it's all about, you know, uh, we'll call it uh, discrepancies, uh, but uh, like we all know, sometimes there's an iota of truth in many rumors and all that. So one thing I think will happen in this kind of situation is distrust, distrust in uh, leadership and governance. When a leader in such position or in any position is found to have falsified their qualification, it can lead to a loss of trust, not only in that individual, but in the political system as a whole, the nation as a whole. Nigerians in diaspora who are ambassadors of their nation in many ways might, you know, find their patriotic sense. <laughs> Carry on, please. Yeah, I might find that, uh, you know, their patriotism, you know, have sentiments clouded by doubt and hesitation, especially for those that are actively in homeland politics or advocacy. Such scandal might result in disillusionment and uh, a decreased engagement, you know, for those of us who want to be a part of the system, but then we shouldn't be. Potentially, it might affect various diaspora led initiatives from investment. Nigger, 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 nigger. nigger. Yeah, the second one is uh, uh, questioning of uh, meritocracy. Meritocracy is very, very important uh, in the kind of race that we are running in Nigeria. In such scenario, it could lead to questions about authent authent authenticity and standards of educational institutions within uh, in the country. It might also trigger a domino effect where qualifications of other leaders are also scrutinized, whether in the country or outside the country, leading to widespread uh, uh, things about the merits of educational achievements you know, within the nation and for those of us who actually live outside the country that have, uh, um, uh, are using our transcripts, you know, evaluated our transcripts to either for work or for school in the diaspora. You know, and thoroughly economic implication, foreign investors like uh, we've all seen for me, I really don't think uh, 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 I should hammer on foreign investors because in a situation where uh, our environment is kept clean, is kept, uh, you know, there's accountability, there's transparency, everybody's working towards a, a common goal. Uh, definitely in, investors, you know, foreign investors will trip in and, um, you know, do what they need to do in the nation and all that. So foreign investors thrive on predictability, transparency and trustworthiness. You know, a scandal like this involving certificate forgery can be perceived as a lack of transparency and integrity when it comes to the national image and the diplomatic uh, relations. Our countries are often judged on the international stage by the actions of their leaders. So uh, if, if this is happening to our leader, of course, it's a scandal. A scandal of this nation could tend to the country's image, leading to adverse international opinions for right. the diaspora. This can translate into um, a tainted national image. Then the last, not the least, uh, in, in regards to the first question, legal and ethical implications. You know, there will be a cause for accountability, potentially leading... Uh, to legal action just like it is right now. So our question and our belief is that the judiciary system, even as we see uh, uh, um, right. the international bodies doing that, it, you know, our, our judiciary system do the right thing, not for self-interest, not for self-gain, but for the reputation of the country and, uh, you know, for the nation to, to move forward. Then right. in regards to, you know, what the diaspora should do in this aspect, uh, advocacy and awareness is very important, demanding accountability, legal action. When there's a need for it, engagement in homeland politics, we need to involve, get involved. There's nothing like a dirty game. If we leave it as nigger, a dirty game, nigger, we, nigger, we, nigger, we, nigger, we, nigger, 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 to occupy our space and we keep complaining. No more complaints, get involved, put resources together. If you're not going, fund those that are going. You know, those you, you believe, you know, have integrity, those you believe will do the right thing and not politicize with people's life and integrity. Supporting education in, in Nigeria is one of those things diaspora should do. Of course, we've been crying for diaspora voting. You know, we should so put can, resources can we, together. Sorry to interrupt you, madam. I'm really sorry. We've gone on a little bit and I, do, I just don't want us to digress into other issues. So we'll come back to uh, the topic. You, you really did lay a very good context for what it is that we are going to be speaking on. So if I can just yield to other panelists and then we'll come back on some of the follow-ups. Uh, if that's okay with you, if you don't mind. Uh, that's fine, madam. That's fine. Okay. No, you asked the two questions I was going for, but yeah, that's fine. The, the, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank, thank you. you. We're trying to keep it to two minutes so that we, we go all around. Uh, may I have Mr. Jackson Ude, please? 
And um, if you can just, in your speech, if you can combine your response to the two questions. Please go ahead, sir. Okay, uh, thank you so much for bringing me on here. Uh, thank you everyone who's participating. I really appreciate this uh, um, opportunity to speak to us on this issue. Um, first, I'd like to say that uh, Nigeria is a developing country. And um, as such, our leadership... Yo, shut the fuck up, bitch. As such, our leadership... Bitch, nigga. Our leadership and selection process um, should have to... will have to have uh, been in a, in a way that... Uh, and genders uh, confidence uh, among the international community and um, uh, foreign agencies. Now, when you have um, a, certificate, a certificate forger or someone who's alleged to have forged a certificate to gain a, a, a leadership role, now it, it raises questions on the integrity of um, Nigeria as a country, the integrity of the people themselves, the integrity of, of even the agency that conducted the elections that uh, brought this person in power. Now, Nigeria relies heavily on IMF, World Bank, and uh, the, the Paris Club in, in sourcing for our finances, to, uh, I mean, uh, um, our, our funds to finance project projects. Now, imagine that you have someone who is not honest, who has been alleged to have forged certificates. Not just that, and someone who has also been linked with narcotic crimes in the United States being selected as a leader or be, being elected as a leader. Now imagine how that uh, person um, is seen Yo, by shut the, fuck up, bitch. the IMF or by the uh, uh, Paris Club. Then imagine uh, and see if that person will have the capacity to um, negotiate or access loans that are required in building that society. That is definitely not going to happen. So the, the consequences of having someone with that kind of reputation on the on the country is dire, just like um, a U.S. A retired major general said in a podcast that was uh, widely circulated. Nigerians don't even understand the, the the consequences of what is going on now until the Supreme Court comes to uh, affirm or otherwise uh, the the presidency of uh, Tinubu. If that happens, Nigeria is going to be highly isolated. Is going to be treated like a pariah nation. I don't see the United States doing uh, uh, deals or doing businesses with Nigeria. I was speaking with a with an, a friend of mine uh, earlier today in the morning, who works for the U.S. Uh, State Department. The impression is is just that they are wondering how this man was able to navigate himself. Your comrade Frederick stopped sleeping uh, with all these baggages and got himself into that position. So they are also watching, like every other uh, concerned Nigerians are, are watching, to see how the, the Supreme Court will affirm this uh, person and uh, continue the leadership process of Nigeria. So it's going to be very, very dire, uh, both uh, nationally and internationally. So I, I, I waiting to see how we'll be able to navigate through this uh, uh, shenanigans. Thank you. So if I may just ask us to stay on the subject of the, the certificate forgery uh, and just keep on that in terms of- Monkey, the, monkey, 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 as, uh, monkey, 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 can monkey, we, can monkey. We, can we, can we, can just, we, can, can, if you get that, yes. can, did you get that person, please? Yes, I, I reported them. I removed and reported uh, them. Yeah, this so is- changed their name. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Yeah, you know, Tinubu said that when they release the documents, it will cause severe and irreparable damage. And I believe that uh, it is that same thing that this person is trying to prevent so that we don't speak, but we will continue to speak. They'll be trying to hack this platform. Immediately we opened, but we know what, uh, you cannot separate the truth from the truth. Over to you, um, moderator. Thank you very much. And then um, just keeping in view what all the other panelists have spoken. Um, I'll ask Honorable Dr. Kenneth Gandhi to please uh, give his own two minutes as well. Uh, well, thank you very much. I will go straight to the point, uh, sit, uh, sitting on all the existing protocols. And um, so I don't need to repeat uh, what the, the other moderators have spoken. Um, everybody is innocent until uh, they are they are approved to be uh, to be guilty. 
And that's the international standard. And also international standard is also the freedom, of, freedom of speech me. Uh, from any everybody in the world. So I will say thank you very much for those people who are trying to disrupt, uh, disrupt the meeting. Uh, it means that they were doing something great. Oh. And that is why they basically doesn't want us to speak the truth. So I say thank you to them uh, for helping us to publicize uh, more of this uh, program, uh, which means it's very, very important to the diaspora and it's important to the Nigerians. Uh, having said that, um, again, like I said, everybody is uh, you know innocent until proven guilty. Uh, but two things, two things, if you are in Germany, uh, where I've been for the past uh, uh, 29 years, if you missed three, four, five letters from your name, whether it's by mistake or by, by intentional or whatever be, be the case, uh, your document will not be recognized. Um, uh, they, will be, they will disqualify that document. And so you can understand if that is a, it is standard with which they hold uh, Nigerians and also migrants in Germany. You can understand that the situation where a complete certificate is assumed not to be genuine. You can imagine a situation where uh, an entering qualification is not said to be genuine. Uh, what that could mean uh, for a country like Germany, and that means that um, every single certificate will be scrutinized. What I think is important uh, uh, from the diaspora perspective is that uh, uh, we should um, uh, seek the truth. We should continue to, you know, to carry the advocacy to find out exactly what happened. And until that is done, uh, we owe it to Nigerians and to our fellow diasporans, you know, to uh, to remain steadfast and allow those people who are helping us to promote this program by trying to disrupt it, uh, uh, not not to let them to win. Uh, that is very important. But if I want to be more direct, I think what we actually expect from anybody, especially the uh, the uh, uh, an individual or uh, or the uh, you know um, uh, the first citizen of the country uh, who have such a uh, allegation, uh, true or false, is to come out openly to the public, to the world, and set the record straight. Um, uh, it's baffling that rather than coming out to set the record straight, so that we could you know uh, judge uh, uh, one way or the other, why that we we have uh, people who actually are supposed to be the light bearers of this country, trying to justify uh, that if you have a, a you know a certificate that is uh, produced before the school is formed, that uh, it's it's acceptable. So I think, like I said, I wouldn't uh, repeat uh, every everything other panelists have actually said. Uh, there's a need for us to be transparent on this matter, and uh, until we uh, we are waiting for the Supreme Court. Uh, um, you know, uh, judgment or decision, and hopefully and prayerfully, uh, uh, justice will be served one way or the other. Uh, but most importantly is that until that is done, um, our first citizen currently um, uh, cannot hide under any any disguise. Uh, he should come out openly, uh, address the diaspora, address the Nigerians, and set the record straight. If such allegations are not true, he should be able to address them in a convincing manner. If it's not, he should also be able to uh, to tell the, uh, the the nation and international community which way forward. Uh, stonewalling, trying to you know send in people to disrupt programs uh, where we are trying to you know put ideas together to look for a way forward is not the answer. Uh, not solving it is has their consequences, uh, like uh, most uh, panelists have already said. Uh, it means that uh, already we have seen that in UK, we have seen that in Germany. Uh, where the certificates are being reviewed, uh, where the authenticity is not being is in arts. My job in Germany uh, in, in the in the last uh, three four years is if you the could just round up thirty seconds to round up, sir. In Sorry Nigeria, to... yeah, recognition of foreign certificates uh, from 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 Africa, and I can tell you the hell of a problem we are getting, we are going through to recognize the certificate. So you can be sure that such scandals is going to make our work extremely difficult. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to call on the other two moderators, and I want to <laughs> bear something in mind. Is this a larger societal problem or is it unique to, you know, just putting that as everybody's speaking, it is something that is fundamentally wrong with the system. So if we, we, we I just want to call on the comrade McGodwin Iwejunwa. Yes, let, let me help if you. I did not pronounce that properly. It's okay, sir. it's okay. Thank it's you. Uh, my Godwin, you were my Godwin. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you very much, GC, SNDN, uh, 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 Comrade uh, Fred. Thank you for putting this up. 
um, what we're doing here tonight, uh, Nigerians, great Nigerians, is vital. It's important. Nigger, nigger, and, nigger, um, nigger, we won't nigger, be nigger, nigger, by anything. I was speaking from the nigger, heart. I'm going to speak from nigger, the heart. Nigger, uh, nigger, nigger, we nigger. all know, we all, um, Nigerians in diaspora are not new to uh, such, such uh, personality being robbed on us. You know, we have, uh, we've had, we've gone through a lot. Uh, you all remember the young man, Hush Poppy, uh, right there in America. Uh, he had that case, and uh, a lot of people knew at that point knew Nigerians were so, 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 you know, they stereotype us. That's one thing we walk around with, stereotype. Uh, but regardless of that, Nigerians in diaspora have been on. We are one set of resilient group of people. Uh, we've gone through a lot, and now this is coming to our face. Right before us, our number one citizen is uh, bringing out forged document. Now, now listen to this. The problem with this whole thing is that uh, the team, his media team, the presidential media team, they are they are smart people, but they are smart in a very foolish way. Uh, they are not putting to context the real issue. They are saying uh, he went to school, he blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, the issue here is he submitted forged documents to INEC. So number one thing here is INEC should be overhauled. Uh, if we have an organization like INEC that does not check and balance uh, people's uh, documents they submit, then we have a problem with INEC. INEC is, is, a, is a big problem for us. INEC should be overhauled. Um, sadly, also, like you've all said, the panelists, uh, the Tunubu camp, instead of facing this thing, uh, the APC people coming out to probably just tell us, I mean, own up to this whole issue. They are rather bringing up different stories. Three days ago, we had BBC telling us, a whole BBC telling Nigerians and the world at large that uh, there is not no forged document, everything is clean and clear. You know, and we know where the, that, that is coming from. So we, there's an issue here. Uh, it's a pity that um, our country president doesn't recognize the diaspora, Nigerians in diaspora. These are the major figure of that country called Nigeria. I mean, diaspora has done a lot. We've come a long way. Niger diaspora promotes trade, like you've all said, foreign direct investment, create businesses. That's where I sends in remittance to their families. I mean, it is the diaspora that is actually carrying that country. And for our country, our president to neglect the impact of what he has done and still want to move on and keep pretending there is nothing is a sad one. So we will be having issues. Uh, diasporas will be having issues. I mean, a week ago, we probably you all had um, a, a, a set of nurses that sat for an exam and they, and they're all Nigerians and now they say the, 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 the documents and the exam, everything is just a sham. So this is what we'll be going through. Diasporans will be suffering some of this stereotype. But I know diasporans, Nigerian diasporans, we are strong, we are resilient and we'll move on. Um, the, the, the sad thing there is this is going to probably last for a long time. Uh, yes. Stereotype and the bad image will probably last for a long time because mm -hmm. believe me, uh, there's an adage that says when push comes to shove, everybody put the blame on me. Um, the world is full of fraudulent people. There are fraudulent people in Asia, America, Japan, wherever. But you see, they, they want to get a scapegoat and put that okay. person like he's the one that is the only fraudulent person, you know? So um, you, it's a sad thing that's come to our country. We want the, the, uh, the uh, Bolatinubu team to own up to this thing. We want them to know that this could damage. I mean, they, they're just around looking for investors. Can you believe that? They if you could around, round up, sir, for 30, look, you have 30 they seconds. They go around looking for investors, and they don't know that all they need to do is probably put things right in, inside the country, and investors will come. Thank you very much. Thank you, GCND, for this program. Um, I, I think uh, we'll take it on from there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the last but not the least, before I call on um, uh, Comrade Frederick, is uh, Timmy Frank. Please go ahead, sir. Two minutes. Unmute yourself, please. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak. And uh, 
I want to tell you guys, you know, the danger of what we're into. I was one of those who monitored the Tunubu certificate forgery closely. Myself and Jackson we were in America for a very long time to follow up with Chicago University to do a lot to ensure we got the victory we are today. The mistake Nigerians have done for over 30 years, we've not paid attention over the character or personality of Bola Ahmed Tunubu. This is not only the first forgery Tunubu has committed. He has multiple of names. He has identity problem. He has tribal problem. He has so many complications in his personality. He claims to be a Lagosian. Tunubu is not from Lagos State. He's from Oshun State. Tunubu even denied his own parents. Now, do you mind so, staying on the topic at no, hand? No, definitely. I mind. just want to give. Yeah. I just want to give a little bit of you know understanding. Some of us, as politicians, I know the grassroots. I've been in in the political space with Tunubu for too long, so I understand and I know him better. So, but anyway, the position today, I'm happy that Nigerians are now coming out to speak. This is not all about PDP, it's not all about Labour Party, it's not all about Atiku Abubakar, it's not all about a Peter Obi, it's all about the integrity of Nigeria. And I'm happy that we started coming out to speak. Today, well, we're just talking about just this certificate of Bola Ahmed Tunubu. In the nearest coming days, FBI is going to be releasing, you know, the record, Tunubu's criminal record in the United States, which is going to be another very, very big topic, not just in Nigeria, but globally. It broken my heart because one, Nigerians will keep paying the price for just one man, atrocity. Let me tell you what happened recently they have the oil and gas summit in Abu Dhabi in Dubai. I will tell you clearly, majority of the Nigerian businessmen who were meant to sign their MOUs on that day, the news, the day the news broke was the day that summit was going on in Abu Dhabi. The minute the court confirmed, Chicago University confirmed that the certificate to Nubu submitted to INEC was fake. Most of our top prominent business people in the oil and gas sector, no foreign investor agreed in signing their agreement with them anymore. They just told them, sorry, we just had the news. So we are no more comfortable in you know coming to Nigeria to do any transaction right now until we see the outcome of your president. So it's sad. That one man has brought so much of shame, embarrassment to over 200 million Nigerians. So I think in forums like this, it's not just we coming to sit down and talk about all these things. We must have an action plan from the diaspora angle to see how there must be very intense pressure from the diaspora. Nigerians in America should do their bits. Nigerians in Germany should do their bits. Nigerians in France should do their bits. Nigerians in London should do their bits. So this is the only way we can come out in mass to tackle this issue that is affecting every one person. So we must deliberate strategy on how to compare President Tunubu either to bow down because if this thing happened to a British prime minister by today, he would have gone. He's not going to be waiting for the court to decide anymore. The citizens of the United Kingdom will make him bow. Thank so you. we have to come up with more things like this. Thank you. There's no doubt. This is the first thing as Nigerians we must do. Recently, we saw how Nigerians came up to protest 
Can you I was 30 shocked. seconds, sir? Can you yes, round up? I was shocked seconds? recently we saw Nigerians were protesting in America, in London, in Germany, in France over the death of that musician. But meanwhile, the people who have killed us beyond our destiny. When you call for protest tomorrow, you will not find any Nigerians over there. So I want us to use this medium to sensitize Nigeria that this is not all about Atiku, Peter Obi, PDP, Labour Party, but the future of Nigeria, we have to defend it with all manner of form. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. So, um, Mr. Comrade Frederick. Thank you very much, everyone. By the time the FBI will release its report on Bola Tinubu in this October 2023, Nigerians will know that the issue we have on our hands, I mean the 220 million of us, the issue is far more than sending people to disrupt Zoom meetings by the time those reports are released. Now, Nigeria, you know, abroad for every four or five Africans you see, at least one is a Nigerian, if not two. We have 120 embassies and consulates from 88 countries in Nigeria. We have a total of 109 missions that is talking about Nigeria. We have 76 embassies, 22 high commissions, and 11 consulates. We have at least 20 million Nigerians in diaspora. Nigeria is a member of 324 global groups. What am I saying here? Where it means that whenever an issue concerns the president of Nigeria, the world reverberates. Whenever the president of Nigeria stands on the rostrum to speak, there are perception. He exudes the image and the destiny of 220 million people. Because some people will be thinking in their heart. They said he has no certificates. They said they don't know his age. They said he's involved in narcotics. They may not be saying it out. These embassies in Nigeria, they already know the truth. Do you know what they're talking about us when they are alone? You know, when I introduce myself to people in uh, in Europe, and I say I'm in Nigeria, which I proud, which I probably do, oh, some will just say JJ Okocha, Kanu Wankwa, Osime. But last week, I introduced myself to a group of friends, and somebody called me Tinubu. I paused. Because my heart like was about jumping out of my mouth and I swallowed it back. Because I could see on his face what it means. And this is not about one person. This is not about tribe. It's not about religion. It's not about the Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria. It's about we, the people. The destiny of Nigeria lies in the hands of Nigerians in diaspora. Because many people in Nigeria today, what they say is, now so we see more, now what thing we go do now, but where we live, from wherever we are, we must speak. You are going to be hearing me not too long from now on international fora. Nobody will stop us talking. We are talking about our country and it will be very unfair for each and every one of us to bequeath today's Nigeria unto our children. Nothing, I used to say, nothing has destroyed our country since 1960 as much as the silence of Nigerians to bad governance. Now, when you hear that your president, the president of the largest population of the black race on earth is this and that. And people now begin to 
rationalize and to say no it's like they start to even if I, for us to solve the problem of nigeria of nigeria we have to first deal with nigerians as a, as as a people because apart from the elites the people the, the sufferers they are attacking their co sufferers because they are used to making bricks without straw in their gashom you know what i mean so liberty is strange for our people now. And that is why the time has come for us to speak. Now, what do we do to solve this problem? First and foremost, Nigerian universities, when your students are graduating, give them their certificates and their transcript immediately. People struggle to get transcripts from Nigerian universities many years after graduation. DSS and INEC, you must scrutinize certificates before people are contesting elections. The Senate must be taking note of what is happening in Nigeria now so that they can review our constitution. In fact, Nigeria is a brand new constitution. Nobody must contest, elect, nobody must be sworn into office unless the cases, the persons, the, the, person have, uh, the person has in court has been concluded. Because you swear in somebody and they start to use the resources of state to fight the state and the people. So these are issues that we must begin to Look, and it's not enough to take somebody out of office because the person forged certificates. Some persons have been removed from office recently now because of their um, uh, uh, certificate saga. You must prosecute whoever forges certificate to enter public office. It is not enough for us to say BBC said. If BBC said, call, so what? What did NTA say? So these are issues that I believe we must do very seriously and i just want to say that what nigeria should focus on now is not junketing abroad to look for foreign investors fix your electricity fix your um your your security let your refinery be working your refineries be working then people invest foreign investors will come you don't need to start to waste money on people to come to Zoom meetings to disrupt our meetings, or people you just you just hire twenty uh, media assistants. Now we don't even know the name of the minister of information because everybody is in the news media. Why do you need all, all of that? That is propaganda. You want to sell propaganda to the people. You see how they are separating the narratives. This the, the, the story is yes, he attended Chicago State University. Yes, we did not. Issue the certificate is submitted to INEC. But Tinubu's team, because they don't feel that Nigerians are gullible, they are focusing, emphasizing, spreading that part A of the narrative that is the attended Chicago. So this is what why this, this is why we must begin to speak up and to give clarifications to the people. And finally, let me tell the Tinubu team, please. Put Nigeria first in all you do so that you don't start to struggle like uh, Femi Adeshina who after leaving office started to see how he can polish his image again. Put our country first. You are receiving salaries, you are making money and all of that. But look, the more you try to suppress the truth, the more you, you, you provoke people like us to come out to speak. Let me just hang it for... Let me just hang on for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we are going to start taking questions, but I wanted to just follow up on your comments, Frederick, if you permit me to. You hit the nail on the head when you said Nigerians. This is not just a Tinubu problem. Um, how did forgery now become part of our society is so prevalent in our society, is prevalent in our communities. It's almost a part of what we do. So I, I don't want us to take a narrow view and focus on this one person because someone in INEC approved it. Someone DHL'd it. Someone in the camp. This, I, I, I don't know. There were people that gathered around, right? There's a cabinet. There are campaign managers that knew this was going on. We haven't looked at, these are all Nigerians. So I want us to take look at it in a more broader scope that we as Nigerians 
what is our issue? How do we begin to respond to this? How because if if it's, if it's Tunumbu today, it's someone else tomorrow. If we don't get to the root cause of it, so that I, I want us to look at that as we start to discuss that. Why are we so comfortable? with these things that don't work. Actually, we in the diaspora, where is our advocacy? We are now talking about um, for in the global community, uh, they, they, are, uh, they are looking at us. Where were they when Nigerians were crying? Where, when they were amongst the first to send congratulatory letters, didn't they have all these records? So let's think about that. Where were we in our own respective communities crying out against the... Um, the ills of Nigeria, who were we advocating to? Where were we in, in, in the US Congress or at in, in Europe? What were we doing as Nigerians? So I'm just I'm just playing angels advocate for us to look at a broader scope. Tinumbu is one. Worst case in another, I, I don't know, four years maximum he'll be gone. But what's the next person? Are we going to continue with a system that allows for such atrocities? from any Nigerian. Is a system like INE going to continue and those that continue to cover such fraud, not for Tinumbu, for everyone else? Because there are many that are not gonna be, that we would never uncover. That's the reality of life. But there is a lot out there. Is it part of our system? Do we continue to agree or accept this as part of our institution? So we are going to take, if, if I don't see, if your name is a device, please go ahead and rename yourself so that um, we can, we can. I'm going to go ahead now and allow you to unmute yourself. Right? We have taken that control off because of hackers. So please go ahead. Um, I'm not sure if it's Mr. or Ms. Oluwatosi. Please go ahead and ask your question. If you could keep it to 30 seconds or one minute, Max. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much um, for the opportunity. Actually, it's a Mr. Um, Oluwatosi. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, I I think um, one thing I'm glad about is the fact that um, Nigerians are now waking up. We have we now have um, active uh, citizens and then no um, activists anymore. And I think this should be done across. But one thing um, that you said that I may want to probably uh, speak on or probably um, ask a question about is now you just mentioned about the next four years. Now the reason why this one is critical is because. This man didn't just start doing this. And so are we going to allow this whole thing to go down this way or want to fight it, fight this to, the, to see the end of it and ensure, because this, like the uh, the last person, I think before the uh, last person speak uh, spoke, said he knows Tinumbu very well. This guy didn't just start doing this. He's, he's a, I think like Dele Faroutimi said, this guy is a career criminal. And so how do you want to address this situation? To ensure, because he didn't win the election, that is, let's let's agree that, that that fact that he didn't win the election. So, do we as Nigerians want to allow this, and then we fold our hands and then go back and then wait for the next four years, and then they keep continuing, or want to fight this to the city end? Nigerians and diasporas should wake up, and then let's make sure that this does not go down like this in history. That's my own little contribution. And then maybe if you can speak to that. Thank you. So may I have, um, so uh, Dr. Frederick, how do you want to take it? Should we just take the questions from the participants and then um, pose it to the panelists to address? For example, yeah, yeah. If you have a question, you can direct it to whoever spoke and okay. the person will answer. But for the last um, speaker, I think this was the comment. Yes, it was. Yeah. So, well, he also said, how do we want to address this going forward? And that's a global question. So we would ask um, Mr. Ikoli, please go ahead. Um, Victor Ikoli, okay, we've lost you. Um, I have raised my hand. I don't okay. know if you have seen me. Yeah, it, yes, Mr. Victor Ikoli was before you. Please go ahead. Um, please go ahead. And then we'll have Dr. Catherine Odorige, and then we'll have Rosemary. Those are the three hands that are up. So go ahead, sir, Mr. Chris. Thank okay, thank, thank you so much for this forum. Thank you, Dr. Freight, for, for organizing this and mobilizing this. Uh, I wanted to own my video so that uh, you can see me. I'm in the office, but, but then uh, I, I don't know why it has been disabled. But the point I want Try to make... Again. 
You can try it now, okay. sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Uh, one, I, I after my comment, I will be going for another Zoom meeting where we are already releasing, if you are aware of the jingle that is going on, of uh, giving uh, the president 14 days to resign or there will be massive protests in Nigeria and in the diaspora. I am part of a team in the US from California mobilizing that. And we have another meeting shortly in the next one hour. But the point I want to set here is that one, I want to leave us with this thought, the international community do not care about the image or the progress of Nigeria or Africa. Let's have this at the back of our mind. Two, the international community have their own agenda and care less about our welfare as long as their interest is well protected. I want us to have this at the back of our mind. Number three, the US is, is all about cloning article on us because Peter Obi is too smart for them. I had a conversation yesterday with a group of people in Nigeria and they acknowledged this. I told them we are aware that there is a conspiracy knowing that Nigerians may kick against Bola Tinibu, they want to enforce or they want to force a tiku on us. I am from Kaduna State. My people have suffered enough and my heart is crying for solution for Nigeria. So please let's have that at the back of our mind that we Nigerians are the only people that can defend our nation. Let's not be afraid. Let's be willing to stand for our rights even if, even if it means dying for it. Because the reason why we are in this captivity is because many of us are afraid to, to, to die. We are always afraid. We don't want to speak the truth. Many of us have seen so many deaths, and that is why we need to stand up. This is the last hope for Nigeria, number, number four. Hence, we should not expect anything from the Supreme Court. That's my verdict. I, have, I saw what happened in the tribunal. And I can tell you the truth. If you are expecting any magic from the Supreme Court, you are making a mistake. So what is the way forward? I have a list of way forwards here. We can think about it. But this is my own opinion. Number one, we must refuse the US solution. Rather, we must demand that the US and the international community listen to us, the people of Nigeria, and work alongside with us. We don't want anybody outside there telling us that they know our problem and they know the solution. No, we know our problem more than them. Number two, we must mobilize Nigerians for national protest greater than answers. It is something we must do. We must be intentional about it. We must start, I didn't, we must start by one, identifying the stakeholders. I am doing my little work, my background work for my own organization with the different uh, stakeholders I know in Nigeria religious leaders, both Muslims and Christians. I'm already creating awareness why what is happening in Nigeria must never be allowed to be seen as a religion. We must, we must understand that the welfare of Nigeria is greater than religion. And that is why, number two, we must so train, if you could just coach, round up, sir, so and, that we can take other people. We, you have 30 okay. seconds. Okay, and then uh, the rate, uh, train, coach, and the rate, and the rate, the protests, until we make sure this government go down, because that's the only way we can have uh, we can have a new Nigeria. If we do these things, I think all these platforms will be useful, or else it will just be another Zoom of just talking and talking and no action. Thank you. God bless you. I wish Thank us well. Thank you. I, I just Thank want you. to chip in something in response to what he said before the next speaker will speak. Um, the Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria will support every non violent action that will bring about democracy and security in Nigeria. Whatever actions people are taking, we do not support burning of houses, looting, killing people. No, it must be non-violent. It we have the freedom to express ourselves, but non-violently. Thank you. Thank you very please, much. Sorry, let me come in a minute, please, man. Sorry, man. Let me clear a point from that last speaker, not Frederick, but the last speaker. We must not be political or bring sentiment to this discussion. I don't want to be part of any discussion. This is the division that is killing Nigerians. 
that the U.S. is trying to impose a tickle on us and this, that, or this theory. is not a bit of, no, we don't need those theory. The theory we are meant to be concentrating on now, how to get rid of what is there today because it's not legitimate president of Nigeria. So if it, has, if it is a tickle of Bubakar or a Peter Obi, we don't care. So we should change that narrative of saying that if it's not Peter Obi, I think that man that spoke last should not bring sentiment that they don't want Peter Obi because they cannot control Peter Obi. This is wrong. When we start on this note, we are going to crash in a minute. We are going to crash. Start talking who we want and who we don't want. If we want to go by ranking today, if we want to go by ranking today and they decide to say, even if the court decide to do the right thing, you can't see the second runner up and go and give to a third runner up. But this is not the case we are talking here right now. We are talking for a better Nigeria. Peter Obi is not the sense that will come and deliver Nigeria. We must change that mentality. Atiko and Peter Obi, as we speak, they're in the same page in this issue of sophisticated forgery. All they believe is that this man has to go and we, the followers or supporters or Nigerians, should start on, should stand on that principle, but not coming to say the US want to impose. This is a division kind of comments that if you if we continue on this route, there are a lot of Nigerians who say these people are not serious. And that is why we don't get to anywhere. So okay. we must correct it and okay, not Timmy. make this platform an obedient yeah. or an article or anything. This is Nigeria issues. Your point, your talking. point, your point this has been it. made. Over, over to you, moderator. Th th thank you, Mr. Uh, Timmy Frank. Oh, give me that period. Give me, give me. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just remove. Um, on mute rights so that and then each speaker will be asked on mute. Dr. Catherine, please go ahead. Okay, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, um, I just want to say that outside of what uh, Gankon, the, the last speaker, the, the speaker before uh, the response we got, outside of the political statement that he, uh, you, he made, I think everything he said was actually my mind for the action that we should be taking for this. Because um, he said something about interest, you know, countries are representing their interest. And all those who are strategies for Tinubu right now, they are representing their interest. His reason for flooding uh, the media, uh, uh, so-called um, support um, offices that he is giving, it is because he want more people to think that they have their livelihood uh, tied to his being in office. And so all of these people who are flooding uh, meetings and uh, social media, they are representing their interest. But I want to say that we must also know the implication of what Tinubu doing this to us means. First and foremost, the most hit is the educational sector. I come from the perspective of myself as a mother when I am encouraging my children to study and you know, be the best in what they do. There is already this rhetoric among young Nigerians that education has come. If we let Tinobu stay in office, then we have helped them to say, to drive home the point that education has come. We see that even from secondary uh, uh, school to university, Tinobu didn't ha doesn't have anything to, to show, but he is in the highest office of the nation. And if we do not do anything, because uh, Moderator, when you said that, uh, another four years, you know, I felt like it was like a defeatist uh, uh, position until we began to talk about, uh, uh, you know, actions that we must take. We must go out and make noise for the sake of one, our children, so that they will be encouraged that uh, doing good, uh, pursuing their life goals has benefits. Or so that they don't begin to think that it is those who go through the corners. If somebody like Tinobu can get to the highest office in our country and we keep mute, and we keep mute about this, then we are sold out. There is no, it is irreparable. We can't repair this in the next four years. 
we can't repair this in the next four years. So we need to put our arts together, put all other um, uh, uh, concerns, all that uh, political sentiments aside and focus on dealing with this. Tunubu must get out of office. If he doesn't resign, we the people make him get make it so hard for him to stay. Yes, the the uh, uh, Supreme Court is they are all sold out. They've all sold out. This is a, a it is a, a huge agenda from INEC to the Supreme Court. You know the cost of Tunubu being in office is quite large. So it is now left for us to do our bits. You know, whatever strategies we have to put together in organizations like yours and all the other uh, who have these platforms, ring the bell and we will follow. We want to be able to change this, to remove Tinubu from office. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm just going to add something. Um, is removing Tinubu from office really going to solve the larger problem of the society that INEC is a problem and we as Nigerians, and I'm going with what Dr. Frederick said, because we tend to focus on taking out the branch, not the root. And that's one of the things that we as Nigerians, we are reactionary until the next one. So if it's not Tinubu, it's another person. I want us to start thinking about what we can do to begin to change our society, to change the institutions that allow this kind of things to happen. Because if it's not Tinubu today, it's tomorrow. I, I mean, I'm not for anyone, but we can't be laser focused on one person. We have to look at it holistically and globally. That's my contribution. And then I'll take Miss Rosemary. Please go ahead. I'm going to ask okay. you to unmute. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody for uh for this. This is um very refreshing. Um, my question is, um, someone mentioned mentioned the BBC report, which I find quite troubling. BBC is a media house. It's, 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 I, I do not understand how they could comment. It was, I don't actually understand what's going on with the BBC. So is there some kind of petition that should be against the BBC to literally mind their business? Because if they are saying Tinubu hasn't done any of this, then they would be, on the other hand, calling David Cameron a liar. Because I remember, I can't remember many years ago, he used made a statement saying that Nigeria is a fantastically corrupt nation. If they put that on the BBC and the whole of the UK has literally tongue lashed and flogged Nigerians for it for years, we've suffered over that statement. And now, same BBC, he said, oh, actually, there's nothing wrong with Tinubu. That's absolutely ridiculous. Would there be some kind of petition against the BBC to shut their mouth? Because they are actually saying uh, a court in America hasn't done a proper job. Would that be some kind of petition against the Because so, I would personally sign I'm that. I'm aware of a petition. They have received 18,000 signatures it and they more. said they are reviewing. Um, I got, I, I think I was one of those and that they are re, they, there was a, a, a response that they are reviewing the um, the content of that news. That's, that's the message that I got. So I don't know if anyone else has received that or got that from BBC. Can I add something? Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Um, in response to Rosemary, BBC will not decide for Nigerians. Exactly. One of the persons that wrote what they wrote is a staff of TVC owned by Tinubu. One of those BBC writers, the Nigerian that wrote that, that so-called report, one of them works with TVC owned by Tinubu, reportedly. So we are not interested in what, what BBC wrote. When CNN published that NSAS protesters were killed during the protest, the Nigerian government said no. It was not true. So if they want us to believe BBC but refuse to believe CNN, CNN that even spoke the truth, I think they are they are just uh, they are joking. Um, the protest is on. The people are doing a lot of signatures are going on. We are receiving emails and all of that. But whatever we are doing, we should put the conscience of our country first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I have Mr. Tony? 
Um, I ask you to unmute yourself. Please go ahead with your comments and questions. And then I'll take Prince Abiola, uh, Mr. Chris. I am not going to take you until after we have everyone else since you've already spoken, if you don't mind. Please go ahead, Mr. Tony. I've asked you to unmute. Tony A. Yeah, hello. Uh, good evening. Um, yeah, I have to tell the line of uh, Mr. Chris, um, like uh, what he said. This is my personal idea because uh, we can't have a, a place like Nigeria with uh, 200 and something million people and the, the demand in the health, the home of the affairs is a, um, has a problem with uh, his uh, identity. Uh, we cannot go on like this. We must uh, find a solution. Like this platform is a great opportunity that we should bring Nigerians together and uh, we have a proper plan what to do. I personally, for one, I don't have confidence in the Nigerian judicial system. It has never worked before, and I don't believe it will work. If, uh, if I cast my mind back what happened between uh, Ababio and the Supreme Court and then um, Lawan and the hope, who's on them, you know, um, there is no, there's no hope uh, with the Nigerian judicial system. So, the problem, well, uh, my suggestion, like uh, Mr. Chris said, uh, we Nigerians, those in diaspora and those back home, we must have a plan. Yeah, you ask a question, um, is the Tunubu the problem? Of course, if you, if you, if you, if Tunubu is not there today, then probably we will put pressure on the next person. We will have to set up the agenda, not just politicians eh, setting up an agenda for us. And at the end of the day, we said, oh, yeah, just four years, they will go. Four years, we know, everybody know what we suffered under Buhari. And the, the uh, Tunubu said that uh, he will continue where uh, Buhari stopped. And that's what he did. So he is a very big problem. And the Niger it's time Nigeria sh should know this. It is a very big problem. As a Nigerian, I go to uh, I go to Berlin to get a passport. It is a, it is a, it's like you are crossing a hurdle. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world. So it is he is a problem. We must find a way that he is out of that very office. Then we have to choose our own president who we want to be there. That a president that can listen, listen to your people, listen to what people are asking for. People are asking a question. I hear um, one of the APC members telling us, Mr. Bashir, he, he is a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He said to us that we don't have the right to ask we, to ask the president a question. That is what he said on Chinese television. And Shewu was asking him, Does, do you mean Nigerians don't have the right to ask where is our president mm -hmm. or know his identity. He said to us that we don't have the right. That is a new start. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I think you, you also talked about the larger problem, which is the political elite, which is what I was alluding to. That is not an isolated incident. We need an overall of the system and how to address the political elites that have held the con the country and, and Nigerians hostage. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask Prince Abiola, please go ahead and unmute yourself. And then Fidelis. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Madam Moderator. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you so very much, um, Dr. Frederick Dorige, for putting up this wonderful forum that we can express ourselves. It's so wonderful. And the, the focal point is about the first citizen of Nigeria. Mr. Bola Ahmed, Tinubu, identity crisis, and all this is 
I, I mean, it's a big quagmire. And for me, how do we solve this? The solution, what is the solvent? Because we cannot keep on talking and talking and talking and talking. What is the profile solution to this? Are we going to keep on allowing the, uh, what should I say, the Western world to dictate to us? Because one, the same Western world, the same America told us Atiku Abubakar stole a lot of money from the Ali Botsin and all the other things and stuff. They said he was banned from the USA. But later, uh, Bukola Saraki paid a lot of millions. Then they let Abuka, Abubakar <laughs> Atiku to come into the US for 72 hours and he stayed in Trump Towers. So America will tell you about that they are the bastion of democracy, but they will go behind again and just module up everything. And we all May I know ask that we please stay on the issue of Nigeria, please, as much yeah, as Yeah, well, we well, ma uh, Madam Moderator, I am still speaking about Nigeria. I'm talking about Nigeria and I'm talking about all the things that surround why we are in this predicament. And I'm asking now that what is going to be the solution? Because a lot the Nigerians are, are we are our own express problems. We've seen this thing. We know we don't have no judiciary, and we know like um, if you if, if when I was listening, somebody said ah four years, meaning like they've even come to the fact like this four years will be all over. And somebody said, made, made a very focal point. He said Atiku is in, in, involved in is enmeshed in this. A certificate saga. Peter B is not even clean. So where are we? We have a problem. We are going to change. We are going to do a a, 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 a total dialysis and see and diagnose the problem. Because we have a very bigger predicament. How do we solve it? Because the generation upon generation will inherit. We inherit it. Madam, uh, Madam Moderator says something so very, very, very. Full. He said, uh, she said, there's a saying amongst the 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 youth that education is a scam, and it is so vivid. So how do we solve this problem? Thank People you, can protest and protest and protest for Mubad. Yes, they have to protest. He died in an unfashionable way. How do we solve this problem? Because all the political circle, none is clean. So yes. hit the nail on the head. Thank you, Madam Thanks, Moderator. Sir. Thank and, you. And man. I can't take credit for that comment. It was my sister, Dr. Um, Catherine Odorige, that made the comment that education is a scam. And also, just let me give a little clarification on my four years. And I am saying that the system or the institutions that allowed um, this forgery will still be here even after four years, even if it does stay. So that that's the context of my of my of my of my comment. Not that I'm giving up hope or anything, but we still have a, an institution or systems that needs overall that would definitely outlive four years. Thank you. So may I have Mr. Pidilis? Please go ahead, sir. I've asked you to unmute. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, I want to appreciate everybody for taking our time to at, um, uh, attend to this um, program. Um, first and foremost, let me say this. Um, whatever Tinubu or any political officer does, it's not going to affect them in international community. Rather, it's going to affect the people. It's going to affect the people. If you are applying for visa today as in Nigeria, you are going to suffer for this atrocity. So what we should be looking at now is how to sens uh, sensitize our people. Because uh, to be honest, I don't believe in the Nigeria judiciary system. I don't believe in the institutions at all. But I still, I still believe the power to change things belongs to the people. So what I think we should be doing now is to see how we can, because if Nigeria has come out today to say, Tinubu, you must step down, Tinubu will step down. What INEC chairman did, if Nigeria has came out and said, INEC chairman, you've robbed us, we don't want you anymore, he will step down. Nigeria, they need to start thinking, they need to start 
speaking, coming out to demand for their right. Because no matter what we say, the international community, they are, it's all about interest. They don't care who is there. It's all about they are, they are fighting for their interest. As far as you are doing their bid, you can remain there for forever. Uh, Cameroon, uh, Pobea is there for how many years? Nothing is happening. So what we should be looking at is how we as the people can demand change, can force our politicians to do what we want, not what the international community wants. Because this thing has been there for too long. And whatever they say, we just keep quiet. We don't even want to fight for our rights. Even the, when you talk to some Nigerians, it's like they will tell you nothing is happening. Come here now, come and fight. So how do we change their mindset? How do we make them see that this thing, they will suffer it more than Tinubu. Tinubu can take his uh, uh, children, wife, sister, uh, girlfriends, uh, friends, cousins to America without any problem. But if you want to, to go to America as a, as a citizen, you will suffer for this crime. So how do you change this? I think that's what, should be, what we should be looking at now. How do we make our people understand that whatever these people are doing, we will be the one to suffer for it, not them. So that by at the end of the day, we start demanding from them to give us the right thing, to do the right things for us. We, if Nigeria had, had come out since to tell uh, the, the uh, INEC chairman to step down, INEC chairman step down. So this uh, AP court judges, look at what they did. They at the final day of the judgment, they they allowed them. Uh, 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 the, 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 judge, the judgment to be covered, but they refused to show their face, their faces. Imagine uh, Aisha Aisha was saying, "You need to see the way they were talking to the to the lawyers, as if they are angry for them coming to court." So these are the things that you should start looking at. How do we bring these people to order? We are, we are, we, are, we are paying you. You, you have should a very good point. Yes. You, you you have really much. nailed nailed the um you have nailed it on the head as they say is like Nigeria we need to take a more holistic approach a broader view of how we are going to solve this problem and not just narrow our scope thank you so much I'm going to have Hope speak um Rosemary I know you had your hand up but because you've spoken before uh if I could just have Hope Umana please go ahead I'm uh, please, ask I'm um, sorry okay. after after Hope let us have Rita. Okay. Rita, Rita sent me a message that she wanted to speak, but she doesn't know if her hand is raised up. No, her hand is not up, so that's why I didn't call her. Okay. So please go ahead, uh, Hope, and then we'll have Rita. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. And uh, I wanted, uh, when I got this uh, um, invite in my box, I was just curious. Um, but because I saw the name of one of my good friends, and I don't mind them checking her, Miss Key, I said I was curious. Let me uh, come in on a Nigerian forum, and I've heard quite a few good things said and uh, unsaid. But um, first of all, let me say who I am. I'm a lawyer. I practice in the state, in the state of Maryland in Washington D.C. and around. The U.S. and also I'm a lawyer in Nigeria um, for a long, long time. I don't want to date myself, but about twenty five years. Um, Nigerian groups, when we begin to talk, we judge, judge, judge. I'm afraid to share with you folks that I believe the ship has sailed on Bola Tinubu. Issue this certificate forgery, and we can talk all we want. Um. Is not going to, the Supreme Court is not going to rule the way we think it should rule. And frankly, there's no way they can rule in that manner. Um, however, we need to think about Nigerian solutions to Nigerian problems in a way that are more pragmatic than just talking, talking, talking. I represent a lot of Nigerian groups <laughs> when they're at each other's neck in the U.S. and uh, and whenever I listen from the point of view of a lawyer to what the issues are, how they conduct themselves, I'm always amazed at how we try to solve our problems. Let us be thinking along the lines of mobilizing for real action around 
um, constitutional changes by engaging some of the members of uh, the Senate and House of Representatives back at home. For example, we shouldn't swear in the president. Um, elections should be held at a time and space that gives room for all litigations to finish before that person is sworn in. So we can get that done. And that's an easy solution. Um, we need to think about who appoints the uh, the people at the INEC. Um, and those are solutions that one can easily get because the elites and the political class may not feel intimidated early enough to know that that might not benefit them. But any solution that one thinks about from the outside, that it will solve our problem, the political cl class will just kibosh that. They will sit on that if it doesn't benefit them. So we, we it's like eating food. We need to begin to think about bite sizes to our problem. It's not gonna happen in a day or two. Over time, but slowly, we pick on one problem, try to solve that, pick on a different one and move. Change has to be incremental to succeed because change, even for the people that you're fighting for, can be very, very intimidating. A lot of Nigerians um, vote for, they clap for the politicians as they drive those bad roads, as they drive those big cars, not thinking and reflecting for a moment that that's their money that those people are using to further their home. So I'm suggesting that they need solutions that are more pragmatic, small, but incremental on them. And some of those could include who is an INEC, who appoints them, how are judges approved, um, are appointed, and uh, having this constitution changed so that until litigation is over, Nobody's sworn in. Thank you. So you're looking at a global strategy for having like an overall of the system, but in increments. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Now I'm going to take um uh, uh Rita. Rita, please. Is she she can I'm going to ask her to unmute herself. Rita English, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Margarita. Greetings, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you speak up, please? Okay. Um, am I audible now, please? Yes, you are. Can you hear me now, please? Okay. Yes. Um, thank you very much, my moderator. Greetings, everybody. Um, thank you, Abel GC. I greet everyone, okay? Thank you very much. I'm really, really sorry. I kind of joined an hour late. I mistook the timing. So I joined in when the guy from Kaduna was talking and I saw he made a whole lot of point and later on someone was saying something else. So I felt I should come in to clear the air, as in to really air my mind on this. This gathering is powered by GCSDN. Am I correct? And in the just concluded election, GCSDN supported We lost your audio there. We can't we lost your sound. Okay, um while she tries to reconnect, maybe you can recognize somebody else who speaks. Maybe we can take um these two speakers have spoken before, so if you can just keep your comments very brief, would I really appreciate that? Um, Rosemary, please go ahead, and then I'll call on Dr. Catherine again. Uh, hi, everyone again. Sorry, um, I just I wanted to make a comment about the um, the issue about um, OB, um, Peter OB, and Atiku, which is clean and which isn't clean. I I personally think that um, I'm not a politician. I don't do politics and. I just sometimes, you know, stumble on information on the internet or something like that on current affairs. But I would say personally that I've got to thank Atiku for the thing he, for what he's done because if he hadn't done that, we would not even be here having this conversation in the first place. So to point fingers at anyone, I think at this point in time is absolutely wrong. I just think we should be thankful that we can even have this conversation in the first place, thanks to Atiku's team or and or Atiku himself. Um, 
and if anything actually favors um, in, a, in a way uh, Peter will be, they should work together, get rid of the cancer, and then there should be a general election. The best man wins. That's how it should be, in, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Dr. Catherine, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, uh, moderator. Uh, so I wanted to react to uh, something you said when I finished my comment, you know, when you said that we are reactional. Uh, right now, the, 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 re the reason why we are all uh, coming together is because of this cancer that is Tinubu. And we must start from somewhere. And if we are able to put concerted efforts and remove Tinubu from office, I'll tell you it is the beginning of redemption from, from Nigeria. We all see the fault in our institutions and everything that is wrong with it. You know, uh, the, the lawyer that spoke talked about incremental. You must start from somewhere, you know. Uh, for example, in China, you go to the stakes. That is, you, you, you can be hanged for corruption. I... I, I have a student who, who, who tells me that they, they watch tele on TV. You are compelled to watch on TV when they are going to execute somebody who is found culpable. What are they trying to do? They are trying to institute in, uh, uh, a clear mind. So to show people that this is the direction you will go if you go to this path. So... Another thing that I just began to think about from what the lawyer said, I was thinking about this last week. We should look for Nigerian solutions to uh, Nigerian problems. This system of uh, our, our government system, for example, there is nothing that checks the precedent. I just began to cast my mind back to our history I looked at the, for example, the Yoruba uh, um, a governing system, where they had the king, the Oyomisi council, and all of that. What does the Oyomisi council do, do? They serve the king a calabash of poison when he is found culpable. So this is something that is within our own governance system. We just took the uh, foreign uh system of democracy without even uh thinking about how it can work in our own system so if we if we are able to start from somewhere you know we will begin to rub minds on how we can change all of those uh uh challenge that we see in our system right now the gov the the president is like the all and all as far as he can send money to the House of Assembly, send money to the uh, Supreme uh, Court, and you no, know, he's in control of everything. So this has shown us this what what Tinubu has done has shown us that there should be another body that can serve that can act as the Oyomi Kisi Council. I don't see how, I don't know how that will play out completely, but I'm already thinking in that direction. And if we continue to dialogue we know a better way on how to make this kind of things work so that supreme powers are not deposited in one man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And I'm going to hand over to uh, Comrade Frederick. But before I do that, I just want to also say something. My, my role here is to play angel's advocate because I'm never devil's advocate. Uh, it is also for us to look at. I, I am one that I, I think it's important for us to think outside the box and for us to broaden our scope. Um, issue is Nigerian citizens are not empowered. When you, you take a toll, even amongst the technocrats, how many have read the constitution to even understand what is allowable within the constitution? You will get less than 10%. My organization actually did a survey, a toll amongst the elites to find what they know about all these things we're saying, there are rules and laws that are there. 
but we as Nigerians have not empowered, we are not informed to take action. INEC has rules and regulations. They have, uh, I think it's a hundred and something pages that Nigerians, the Electoral Act, we never took the time to review and demand a system that works. So we 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 talk, we're very good at, at speaking, but we do not like to do our due diligence to support ourselves. Very few people like Dele Farutini are the ones that are always crying based on the information that they have. Maybe if more of us were armed with the information about the constitution, about the electoral act, about what is achievable, even from as uh, from our local government, maybe things will begin to change and we will not sit on the sidelines waiting for misery to happen. My point, and I will stay, I mean, I, and I'm, I'm now speaking as a participant. My point is, is Tinumbu really the problem or are Nigerians the problem? Our institutions that we have allowed to support corruption with, without accountability and consequences, is that really the problem? Because Tinumbu will leave, another will come. Buhari was there for eight years and on and on. We have had a system of leaders, broken leaders that have failed to deliver on the promises to Nigeria and Nigerians have refused to do anything. So is Tinumbu really the problem or are we the problem? So I'm going to hand over to uh, Comrade Frederick and um, thank you all for this opportunity to be part of this conversation and I'm really hoping that our thoughts are provoked and that we take a global and holistic approach in really rebuilding Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um... We are going to give all the panelists one minute to make their closing remarks. But before then, Rita was speaking and she went offline. Rita, can we get you for one minute? One minute, please. Straight to the point. If Rita is not there, I got a message from Reverend Elisha. Okay, from... um, I'm here. I'm here. Please go straight to I the point. I am here. I'm here, sir. Can you? Yes. Okay. Okay. The point I want to actually, the point I really want to make is, we are gathering here. We are gathered here because we need solutions to our problem facing us as Nigerians. Okay. The last election that was concluded. Everybody who is going to be very honest with himself or herself will agree that someone won the election and some person stole that mandate from him. And out of the three front runners, we have just one person who can freely travel to any part of the world today without any form of indictment. Okay? I don't know how many of us listened to Gregory hopefully, or something, talking about um, the election, saying that allowing Tinubu is going to be very dangerous for Nigeria, and he's pushing an article, an article that we know has um, a criminal... Let me, let, me, let, me, let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you, Rita. Let me interrupt you respectfully. All right. There is a topic we are working on, and I want every let let us focus on the topic under discussion. The title of the topic is "What are the implications of the forgery, forgery in inverted commas of Tinubu, and on Nigerians in diaspora? What are the implications, and what are the solutions? Please anchor your thought along that line. Thank you." Let's forget about Tinubu or uh, article this and that. Just, just focus, please, on the thing. Hello? Maybe you want to take the panelists now. I don't know if yeah, she... Um, okay, her, we, we lost her audio. She doesn't have any audio. Okay, um, let's have uh, Reverend Elisha. He sent a message on the chat that he wants to speak from Ghana. Elisha, please, over to you. Okay, let's go back to the panelists. Elisha is not there. Um, Comrade Doris, 
Your closing remarks. Hello. Hello. Can you, Can you hear me? Who is speaking, please? This is Reverend Elisha from Ghana. Okay, please. You have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize uh, uh, for coming in late. I saw the um, the meeting notification just in late. Um, when I joined, I met about two panelists, talked about issues in Nigeria. But um, as you said, uh, the main topic for this discussion is, let me get it, is it forgery? You joined a Zoom meeting, sir. And, it, and, yes. and the Zoom meeting came with a theme. And that is why we are here. Good. And the theme is, is it, the, is it forgery? We are discussing. I, you may be taking are, us back if you're not sure what the theme is. Uh, so you may be taking us back to the conversations we've already covered. Um, so maybe we can, maybe you can stay back a little bit, listen to the panelists do their closing remarks, and then if you still have, have a question after that, you can you can come in. So we are going to go ahead and move on with the panelists. Thank you, sir. Just stand by for a second. Thank you. As you stand by, please look at the theme of this program because you sent a message that you wanted to speak, right? So um, now to the panelists, Doris, over to you. Your closing remark, please. Uh, thank you very much once again for the opportunity to speak on this issue. Uh, my closing remarks will be uh, that um, integrity should be the watchword Whatever you do, your life is like a mirror to other people. And uh, whoever you choose to represent you says a lot about your person. The person of Bola Metinubu has a lot of baggages. And I don't think he speaks well for the country, Nigeria. Unfortunately, we have a judiciary that has been bought over, that has been pocketed. And that speaks doom for Nigeria. So until Nigerians realize that our institutions need to work and people must speak truth to power always, we will always remain in the dungeon. It's unfortunate what is happening and what is affecting diaspora and Nigerians in diaspora. This is very grave because the consequences are very, very extreme and it's going to further damage the reputation or the value of the Nigerian passport. So the way the decision of the Supreme Court on this matter will have either good or bad effects on the general Nigerians. So I want to urge all Nigerians in whatever capacity you are, that you must always stand firm and speak truth to power. That's my closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Jackson Ude. Okay. Uh, thank you once again uh, for bringing me on. I I want to uh, close my remark by saying that uh, Nigeria will have to go back to fixing our leadership selection process, making sure that whoever is aspiring to lead Nigeria is someone of integrity and honesty. And that um, will uh, require that the umpire, which is INEC, must be allowed or must be given the opportunity or the powers to do thorough due diligence in ensuring that whoever is aspiring for any political office is thoroughly vetted. The reason why we have a Bola Tunubu in leadership position is simply because the system allowed someone of that personality to uh, go without being vetted. 
INET did not do their due diligence. The security agents didn't do their due diligence. It's not that they don't have the powers. They do have the powers, but either because they are also deeply corrupt, they couldn't uh, get this man out of the way before he usurped the power, the, the, presiden the presidency of Nigeria. So going forward, we have to go back to seeking for ways of uh, um, uh, rejigging our leadership selection process from the security agencies up to the Independent National Electoral Commission. Those agencies will have to be rejigged, be thoroughly fixed, so that at the end of the day, we don't have a, a certificate forger or a drug baron or someone with questionable character taking over the leadership of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jackson. Um, let's have Mark Godwin, please, your closing remarks. Thank you very much. Um, tonight has been a very special night um, for Nigerians in diaspora, and I want to thank you once again, uh, Fred. Uh, rounding up my own take on this is, uh, first of all, uh, I want to say we should not relent in doing things like this, coming together, paying our voices. Yes, they say, um, we, we are outside, we don't have much influence in the, with them, but this voice we raise at a point, it will, it will get somewhere. Um, diaspora matters a lot. Diaspora has major influence in Nigeria. So um, checking our leadership, checking those that uh, power our leadership is, is a great concern to us. So I want to add by saying, um, yes, Nigeria seems to be like uh, being held by a group of people, a cabal, like they call themselves, but we can get them out. We can get, my, get them out with consistency in such things, things like this. We can get them out with uh, coming up with ideas and ways of doing things like we did last time in the last election, bringing out arrangements, policies from our diaspora angle. And more importantly, now listen to this, we need to get into governance too. Wherever you are in the diaspora, begin to think politically, begin to think of how you can get in there and help to change the system because nobody else would do it for us. Thank you very much, Fred. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've all been mentioning my name, Frederick, uh, but the fact is that the program has been anchored by the Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria. Uh, not just Frederick, I'm just a part of the team. Thank you. Um, let's have Timmy, Frank, Timmy. Okay, we'll be back. Honorable Kenneth Bandy. Okay, I know that he said that he has another program. So is there any- And there is Florence Keys. I don't think, uh, patience, I'm sorry. We have patience? a patience, yes. Patience, please. Your closing remark. Thank you. Yeah, again, um, this is not just about um, uh, Bola Metinibu. It's about the reputation of Nigeria. It's about us. So it would be very important for us to, you know, start by having individual checks. You know, this will lead to our collective disposition and our collective uh, um, expo exposition. Uh, because it's from the citizens, it's from the individuals that we tomorrow have presidents and governors and uh, House of Assembly members and all that. And some of us have had the opportunity of leading organizations, whether domestically, locally and internationally. You know, what do we understand uh, when it comes to um, accountability, um, efficiency, empathy, you know, transparency, very, very important. Uh, today we're hammering on uh, Bola Tinubu uh, tomorrow, you know, the way we have led our different organization, the way we have uh, interacted as Nigerians, you know, individually, let's have a self-check because that is very important. All, you know, everyone has uh, a view of what to do. We are adults. We know, understand good governance, especially for those of us who have a view of Nigeria and who has who have had the opportunity of living in the international body, you know, what do we do when it comes to this? So individual checks, which will lead to our collective disposition and exposition. Thank you again uh, for the organizers of this, um, of this uh, wonderful uh, talk today. Um, thank you again.
Thank you. I want to assure each and every one of you that whatever we have spoken today, all the ideas, we are going to collate them and we are going to start an action plan on how to implement all of these ideas. Now, um, we are starting a program for secondary schools where we are going to organize competitions for secondary schools to test their knowledge of the Nigerian constitution. The idea is for us to let them know their rights as a people. We know that the constitution of Nigeria today has some issues, but I want you to just watch out for that program. Fellow Nigerians, we must stop tolerating what we ought to terminate. What is happening in Nigeria today will never be tolerated by South Africans within the same African continent. If you add the number of Nigerian soldiers, police officers, Navy, Air Force together, they are less than 1 million. Many people don't know that. In Nigeria, their total number, including the police force, they are less than 1 million. But since I was born, almost 57 years ago, I have not seen 1 million Nigerians on the street protesting. 1 million at the same time protesting. Since I was born, I've never, I've never seen that. Until we have 1 million out of 220 million on the street, until we have that 1 million, we can never be free as a people. By protesting, just like I said before, it's not about violence. The number of the people on the street is the ammunition. And that is why I talk about revolution without ammunition. The number, the sea of human heads you will see on the on the street, one million can stop any government. You don't need to shoot, we don't need to shoot guns. We don't need to burn tires. We don't need to kill our fellow Nigerians. Now, fellow Nigerians, do not give up. But know that if we could endure Buhari, and now I want to enter another phase of suffering. <laughs> it means that it means that we seem not to know that Nigeria belongs to Nigerians. We did not escort anybody to Nigeria. Nobody is more Nigerian than Nigerian. We are talking about our country here. Very recently, the name of Ghani Farway, uh, um, Farway Emi came on board again. Why? Someone that died 30 years ago. But his name resonated again with the Chicago scandal. Why? Because he started a fight. Which means if he did not fight, we've not heard his name again. It means that whatever we're doing today, posterity will not forget us. We should ne never give up on our country. Most of us living abroad, we are angry abroad because what is happening today in Nigeria is directly opposite of what happens in normal societies. Directly opposite. Everything. How can a country be so blessed yet so poor? Show me. Nigeria is richer than 12 European countries put together. For how long? Should we be en uh, enduring vampires? And I don't want to use the word uh, criminal uh, career, criminal career. I prefer to use uh, ancestral politicians. For how long? So please let us not give up on country. And I believe that if we don't give up before the finishing line, we shall have a better Nigeria. The error we can make in our generation is for us to leave the struggle for our children. We are fighting today because our parents, some of our parents did not fight. This must not be a generational problem. This program is not about talking about talking. We are going to put all these things together. Every month we are going to have a program. Next month we are going to review what, re what went wrong with the Nigerian uh, election. But ask yourself as you go from this program, why is it that suddenly 
apart from Atiku, Peter Obi and the others, the other uh, contestants, why is it that suddenly the opposition parties in the National Assembly became quiet? So all of these things happening. Because first, Tinubu gave them 70 billion to share. Now, we don't hear about Labour Party in the National Assembly. We don't even hear of PDP. Because they are not, it's like they waited for their turn and their turn has come to chop. I want to thank Jumoke, please. Are you there? I'm here. I wanted okay. to use the floor to you. Okay. Um, we're about closing this program. Is there something you want to add? No, I just wanted to add that collaboration is key. Right. Okay. We need to continue to collaborate as Nigerians in diaspora and then as Nigerians too, because we can't do this alone. And uh, Comrade Frederick, we have a citizen's responsibility program that I can give to you. So as you go to high school and you're doing this with the citizen, um, with the students, we have a package of information that teaches them not just about their rights, but about what their responsibilities are through their local government, through their legislators, just to also know, um, help them be empowered. So I'll be sharing that with you as well so that you can use it. Thank you very much. Um, Rachel Osazua, I'm sure you are shocked now to hear your name. Rich, Rachel Osazua, I know you did not indicate that you want to speak, but I want you to say something in this program because I know that you have been very active on our programs and I decided to surprise you by please asking that you speak for one minute on this program. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. Me, Mr. Frederick, thank you so much. Thank you. I really don't have much to say, but um, we are all Nigerians. Um, we'll keep fighting. I will keep hoping. I will keep praying that God will help us so that we'll have a better Nigeria. That's, that is my hope, that one day Nigeria will be better and uh, all of us will be very proud as Nigerians. We should not give up. We should just keep hoping. We should keep praying and we should keep working towards it. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Now, is there anybody, before we close, that wanted to Hello. say something? Is there anybody that wanted, please don't interrupt like that, please. Is there anybody here that wanted to speak, had the urge to speak, not Elisha. Elisha, please hold on. Elisha, please hold on. That had the urge to speak or wanted to speak or wrote something on the chat, we didn't see. I want to give you that opportunity for one minute before we conclude this program. But we tell you, this program will be, will be happening every month henceforth. If there's anybody, please just, Hello, sir. just unmute yeah, yourself sir. and speak hello sir yourself. yes carry on please yeah yeah, Prince yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, my... you have one minute please all right sir thank you uh well done for putting up this wonderful show like you said it's going to have a continuity and it's very much welcome thank you so much uh uh of revolution thank you what i want to say is like don't you think at this point in time because Every other person we presented on the on the uh, fora of presidency as a president, they all have skeleton in their cupboard. Professor Yami Oshibajo was the one that was part of the uh, selection when the uh, selection for APC uh, flag bearer will be. Is it, uh, somebody was asking me, like, is it not time to call Professor uh, uh, Yemi Oshibaju now? That's my question. That is your question, but somebody also asked me, when shall we call you to be the president of Nigeria? Thank you <laughs> very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Elisha wanted to speak, and we, we told him to go and look for the theme of the program. I believe he's back now. I just want to respect him. 
and give him one minute to speak. Elisha, Reverend Elisha from Ghana, please over to you. Unmute yourself. So Benjamin Ogbain is very quiet today. I'm observing you. Um, Elisha is not speaking. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank each and every one of you for finding time to join us today. And we hope that we shall be alive to hello. see a better hello. Nigeria. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Elisha, carry on. You have 38 seconds to speak. Thank you. You muted yourself again. Please. After this 38 minutes, because it's counting now, then you Hello, to... okay. Yes, yeah, speak, please, speak. Your mic is muted again. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us and we hope to see you again. Um, same time next month of November. Jumaka, hello, can you, can you hear me? Uh, you cannot speak now again, Elisha, uh, until next month. Thank you for joining us. Jumaka, over to you. Let's have the conclusions and we are off. Thank you all so much. Uh, this was time well spent. And uh, as everyone has said, this is a collaborative of effort. We are going to continue this conversation not for the overall of the system of the institutions that are not working for us as Nigerians, that we will be empowered. And wherever we are as Nigerians in diaspora, we have a lot of work to do as advocates uh, for the good of Nigeria to call out those communities that are also helping support the perpetrate, perpetration of fraud and bad governance for their benefit I think we have that responsibility to call them out. We can call them out respectfully and intelligently. We can continue to like, you know, show them off. If you are for democracy, then let, let us see democracy at work in your action and in your policies towards Africa. Um, so we can't get tired, as everyone has said, we must continue to work together. We must continue to hope and we must continue to inspire Nigerians back home. That hope is not lost. We understand that they are broken and it's very difficult to rise uh, when you are hungry, when a system is working against you. So we also have that responsibility to continue to prop them up, give them hope with our support, not just financial support, emotional and mental support. Um, so that's that's my comment. God bless you and uh, hope to see you guys again and hope to see more collaboration uh, from Nigerians in the diaspora. Thank, thank you, you thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, we recognize your presence, the Vice President of GCSDN, our very mommy, Comfort Olatuji, we are seeing you, you are quiet. We recognize Sir Benjamin Ogbaini and each and every one of you. Thank you for coming and see you next month. Bye-bye and God bless. Bye.